Today we're talking about four steps to change your eating habits and shortfalls or pitfalls rather on where people go wrong, where people fall down. And the short answer is you got, to change your habits, you have to know the ingredients of a habit, which are cue, routine, reward. Those are three of the steps. And the fourth one is practice. So this video is we're gonna cover how you can change your eating habits, but kind of in a realistic way. This isn't gonna happen overnight. This is gonna take some effort and compassion and, um, and, and um, not judging yourself too hard, not expecting instant results, not expecting yourself to be perfect. Um, and so this video, we're gonna outline how you can go through and, and rewire some of your habits. So this comes out of the research from uh, Charles Duhigg's book, The Power of Habit. It's a great book. Um, and if you like the video, I'd love to hear you comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts and for you to try this in your own life. Let's see if I can distill it and make sense in a quick and easy way for you. The big picture is habits are automatic behaviors that you do. So you you drive to work, you don't really think about where you're driving, but you just do it. And um, the same thing is true with eating, like eating at night or maybe snacking during the day or eating after you're done eating or whatever eating thing. It might happen automatically. It probably happens automatically. It does happen automatically. So the first step is one, no, what are we talking about here? What's the routine? What's the process? Break, break it down one, one thing at a time. Let's say you, you have terrible eating habits. You snack all day and then you get hungry at night and you, you binge eat at night. You have no willpower so you just stuff yourself. We need to identify one, one thing at a time, okay? This is why I said at the beginning, you know, go easy. This isn't gonna be an overnight fix. But um, you want to take one eating habit, whether it's snacking during the day too much, or you come home, you're exhausted, and you um, you're, you start overeating, or or um, there's a thousand, thousand different ones, thousand different ones. Um, you want to bring awareness. I'm talking, how many times do you do this eating habit? When? Where? Um, what? What foods? What, what, what's really going on? What different types of foods? So that's the first step. You, you, bring, you bring a lot of awareness to when and where, how much, what, what's going on. And with that, you, I would suggest keeping a compassionate journal. It really helps to have this written out on paper. Your, your memory is just, it's not, it's overrated. And so when you have a pattern that you see snacking during the day, you know, I snacked um, seven times during the day, and you see this seven times a day for a week, you have it written down, the journal entries, it'll hit you harder. It'll get you to really wake up. And that's what we're here. That's what we're doing in Weight Loss Enlightenment. We're waking up, we're thinking differently about food. And part of this, this first step is all about bringing awareness. And I don't mean judgment. I do not mean judgment. I want you to, don't even worry about changing your eating habits right away. I had one guy, he saw that when he did this, he, he was eating a lot of sugar, so he cut out sugar. And as you know, when you just cut out something using willpower, that's a diet. So he started feeling bad. He started getting withdrawals, started getting cravings, and he finally opened up and said, I just cut it out. Um, but now I feel bad, and we, we talked about it, and, and um, now he's back mindfully uh, bringing awareness, really important step. The second step is then getting clear on the reward. So when, this is, this is so important. You know, oftentimes I'm hearing food as is addiction, there's sugar dependency. Um, you know, there's elements of food that are drug-like. It does release positive chemicals in your brain that mimic drugs like dopamine. But, but so does, you know, hanging out with friends. So does, uh, you know, any other thing, taking a shower. Those things all release the happy chemicals. 
and they all give you a hit of, of, of chemicals that make you feel good. But for food, we need to identify what you're getting out of it. Why are you doing this? And, and you know, is it relief? Is it distraction from boredom? Is it to get away from pain? Is it when you're sad, when you're anxious? Are you feeling low energy and you just need a little pick me up? We got to get really clear on what you're doing and how it's rewarding you because the takeaway, the takeaway, the number one lesson that we can learn how to change our eating habits is, is, uh, is that you do not need the food for the reward. Currently you might be binge eating to escape. You do not need food to escape. You do not need food to feel better. You do not need food to get the reward. So get really clear on the reward. How do you feel? What, what's, is there something about, let's say your part of your routine is going to the store at midnight or going when your family's asleep, going to like Jack in the box and getting food. Is there something about that routine that is rewarding? You know, you're, you're excited, you're driving, you're, rebelling, you're, you're getting control, you're, you have, you're, you know, you're, you're in control. It's just you, it's your time. You want to get super clear on all the rewards. Is it social? Is it, you know, what's going on? This is where, again, having these gentle expectations that it's going to take a while to piece this together and the behavior that the routine that you're doing that you want to stop doing, you're going to keep doing it in the beginning. So don't judge yourself. Don't expect this to change overnight. We first bring awareness to the routine, then we bring awareness to the reward, and then um, we bring awareness to the cues, right? So what's, what's happening beforehand? Is it, is it a location? Is it a stimuli? Like maybe you come down home after dinner, after you go upstairs, maybe you answer a few more emails or whatever, and you come back down to the kitchen as the cue, or maybe it's a negative emotion. Maybe there's a certain time of day that where you notice all your bad eating routines are coming from it and you th start to think, oh, well, that's after, that's right before I have a stressful meeting. That's right after I have a stressful meeting. So cues are, are oftentimes are emotional, but oftentimes their their location, sometimes just the presence of food, walking by your, walking by the, the thing at work with all the donuts, right? That, the, the kitchen with all the donuts, that can be a cue. And the cue then triggers an automatic behavior that you don't even think about. And so the key is to substitute the reward. I mean, sorry, the routine. You can keep the cue and this and the uh, reward the same. So let's say your cue is, you know, the kitchen at night. You when you and you're maybe a mixture of sadness in there as well. So you're feeling sad at night, no problem, and. You, you see the kitchen, it's an empty kitchen, maybe you're a little bit bored. These are all cues. These are all uh, setting the stage for a, a bad eating habit to occur. And so you, that's, those are the cues. We don't try to change the cues. We try to change the routine. Your current routine, maybe it's driving out, maybe it's eating, driving, ordering in, maybe it's just eating a lot of food or keep snacking. We want to practice self-care instead. Self-care, tons of different ways. Calling a friend, taking a hot shower, going on a walk. And we need to practice and repeat this many times to figure out what self-care thing gives us the same reward that the food does. And this is why it's gonna take an attitude of non-judgment because one night you're gonna come down to the kitchen, you'll practice self-care, maybe it's going on a walk. And the walk doesn't give you the same reward that food does. So you feel pulled to eat. And in my teaching, you do eat. You bring mindful awareness. You don't disassociate, you don't judge yourself. You allow yourself to eat. But you repeat it the next day. So uh, the situation comes up again. You try a different self-care technique, walking, maybe you're dehydrated. you know. And in this way, the fourth ingredient here is practice. This is how you practice building new habits, okay? See how this, it, it's, it takes time, awareness, compassion, awareness, reflection, but I think this can spark some thoughts for you, so let me know your thoughts. All right, peace.